Are you looking for an agile release plan template? Perhaps something just like this. Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to create this template from scratch and make some recommendations along the way for the kind of data that you're going to want to input into it. Now, if you are short of time, I have made this pre-built, pre-formatted template available for instant download. There will be a link in the description down below if you do want to pick it up. Nevertheless, let me now walk you through step by step how to create this template from scratch if you do have a little bit of time. So the first thing that I'd recommend that you do is just give your document a title. That way, if you share it with any stakeholders, they know exactly what they're looking at. So I'm just going to put in here Agile Release Plan. Now, what you could do is you could put in the project name here. So it could be something like, and I'll just show you that now, that would be something like Project Name release plan. Then I'm going to, so I put that into B2. I'm then going to bold this and I'm going to increase the font size to around 18 or 20 just to differentiate it from the rest of the document. You can change the font as well. Now just use a larger font here. It doesn't have to be exactly 20 and choose a font that kind of matches your organization's branding or one that you like the look of and it's clean and easy to read. I'm then going to select A1 through to M2 and I'm going to put a gray background on this. Again, just to show that it's a header. Uh, and to differentiate it from the rest of the document. At this point, we are now ready to start creating the columns. I'll walk you through the columns that we're going to include and the suggestions for the information to capture in it. So at first, we want at risk. We just want the ability to specify whether the particular you know, task feature, if you like, is at risk. This is going to be a yes, no flag, and we'll set up some uh, data validation for that shortly. Sprint, we want somewhere to specify what sprint the task sits within. Is it one, two, three, etc. Then going to have task name. So here we're able to uh, provide a clear descriptive name for the task or feature being worked on. We are then going to have feature type, which, you know, features for your agile release plan depend on the context of your project but they typically represent functionalities or deliverables that add value to the product. So as an example, it was a if it was a new website, it could be something like, the first feature could be something like website build. The second feature could be something like SEO. The third could be something like the contact forms. You get the idea. We're gonna have a start date. We're gonna have a finish date as well for each task. We are going to have duration. We are going to have story points. We are going to have status. There's three different statuses I recommend. We're going to build that out shortly. But yeah, you can indicate the progress of the task, basically. With the story points, I didn't really mention that one. That's assigning the effort estimation for the task. So it's typically given as a number. You likely know that if you're in Agile Project Management, but I thought I'd just mention it just in, in, in case you, you know it's new to you. And then we've got release date. So that is the release or delivery date of the task if applicable, and then goal. So what is the broader goal or outcome associated with the task? So what I'm going to then do, put all those in, I'm going to bold those. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. So this is all on the home ribbon. Let's put them at 12. I'm also going to give this a nice light gray background. I'm also going to expand this row to a height of around, let's go around 30. I'm also going to, in the alignment, I'm going to put those into the middle and we're going to put those left for now. I'm also going to increase the indent by one just because it's, uh, it looks better visually. It's easier to see. I've then selected column B. I've held shift on my keyboard up to column L. Look for this little icon in between any of the columns. Left click, and I'm going to drag this across just to make them a little bit bigger for now. We can always change them. So for instance, goal, you're probably going to want to be a bit larger. Um, and that's probably good for now. I'm then going to put some borders around this. So I'm just going to go from B4 through to L20 for now. On the home ribbon, I'm just going to click on this drop down and I'm going to click on all borders. So we've got basically a table. Now I want to set up the, the drop downs for various different fields. So we'll call this release plan. Just rename this sheet here. I'm going to create a new sheet by clicking this little button and I'm going to type in key. I'm going to go back into the release plan, go into B2, control C or copy, go into key, go into B2 again and press control V. Then what I'm just going to do is rename this. So click on that cell, double click up here and press key. 
And then we can go from A1 through to F2 and just put that gray background. Now we need to set up the different options. So the drop downs we're gonna have are at risk. And the only other one we need to set up is going to be status. So I'm gonna do that in here. I'm gonna bold that, bold that, and I'm gonna put both of those in a light gray as well. Now the at risk is need to be a yes or a no. So that what we're doing here is just makes it much easier to populate the template so you don't have to type in the same things every time. It also locks down the cells to particular values and you'll see that in a minute. So for the status, we're going to have um, planned, ongoing and released. Now one thing I'll mention is this order is quite important because if you put released at the top, when it comes to the drop down, released will appear at the top. So whatever order you put this information in is going to be visible on the drop down. So just bear that in mind. That's all we need in the key. I'm gonna left click on this key and drag it to the first position. Now you can change the position, whatever suits you, but I like it in the first position. So now we just need to set up the data validation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select column B, I'm gonna click data, and I'm gonna select, select data validation click data validation. In the settings, I'm gonna go list. In the source, I'm gonna click in here, and then I'm going to go into key, and I'm just gonna select B5 and B6, and you'll see equals key, so it's looking in the key sheet between these particular references. So B5 and B6, press okay, and you'll notice now that there's this drop down. The way I set that up though, it means we've got the drop down in all the cells that we don't need it in. So to get rid of that, I'm gonna go B1 through to B4, data validation, on the data ribbon, data validation, allow, I'm gonna change that to any value. I'm gonna press okay. And that will remove it from all the cells we don't want the drop down in. However, it will be available for every single row underneath. And the beauty of doing that option is that if you build out this release plan to hundreds and hundreds of rows, it will be applied for you. The next one we need to set up is the status. So let's go through the same process, but just change it somewhat. So select column J, on the data ribbon at the top, scroll across to data validation, click data validation. In the allow, drop, uh, click the drop down, click list. In the source, click in there, and then go back into your key. This time, we're gonna be selecting these options here. Press okay. And again, we'll have all those options in the order specified. Now again, I just need to remove it from J1 through to J4. So select those cells, data validation, data validation, allow any value. Press OK. So it's removed from those, but it's all on those underneath. Now, if we wanted to add any new options, we can do that. You just add it to this key and then you just change the reference. So you'd actually basically just have to go back into here, data validation, data validation, and then you'd basically just change the range. So it'd go from B or go from D5 through to D7 as an example for the status to D5 through to D8 or D9, if you like. You get the idea. And that's all we need for this essentially this release plan, but I'm now gonna show you how you can create a Gantt chart if you like to visualize all the information once you start documenting it. So this is the base template. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head back into this here just to copy across the data, okay? I'm gonna show you how to create the Gantt chart from scratch. So I'm copying and pasting it in. That will do. I'm gonna delete row 17 through to row 20 so you don't need it anymore and I wanna delete. So all I've done, the only reason I've done that is I just want this, this dummy data in that we can build the Gantt chart off. Bear in mind, you won't be able to build the Gantt chart unless you have data, so just bear that in mind. So maybe just put in dummy data for yourself. Right click here, I'm gonna go on Format Cells, and we're gonna ch change this into a date. Right click on G, Format Cells. Now this is a little bit, you know, you won't need to do this, or you might need to do this. You probably will want to change these to date columns right click format cells date but yeah i just need to do it for now to clean up my data the other one we need to do is release date so right click here format cells date okay so now we have all the data that we need uh, to build this gantt chart if you like or this this visualization of our release plan so what you're going to want to do is basically click in let's click in b19 insert we're gonna go on recommended charts. Oh no, we're not, sorry, let's start again. Select um, F5 through to F16, and then click on insert and then click recommended charts. And then what you want to do at this point is click on all charts. You then want to click on bar, 
And then you want to select the second one, which is a stacked bar. So hopefully you, you followed along there. Press OK, and you'll see we have, now have this created. So I'm just going to expand this out, make it larger. OK, that's the first thing I'm going to do. We can change the chart title. So let's just call it release plan. So double clicked in there and just type that out. I'm going to bold that as well. Now, what we need to do is if you left click on these blue bars and then right click, what we want to then select is select data. So we've got to do a few, a few different things here. So I'm going to edit this. So I'm just going to call this start. So I'm changing the series name. So basically it's bringing in all this data in this reference here and the series name is start. So if I press okay, you will now read it as start. Okay, that's why I've renamed that. The other one we want to bring in is add series name. This is going to be duration. Click in series values. And now we're going to select H5 through to H16. Press OK. And you'll see it's added this down below. Now on the horizontal category axis, we're going to click on edit. And the label range we're going to have is both of these. Now you don't have to do both these. You could just do it on sprints. You could also just do it on tasks. But if you if you include both, you get this nice breakdown and you can see, look, we've got that sprint one, task one, sprint one, task two, sprint two, task one. So it just makes it easier on the eye and to differentiate between them. Now you can do, you know, some color coding on here to differentiate between the sprints, but I like to use the color coding in a different way as you'll soon see. So press OK. So we've got all of this on here. That's looking good. Press OK. So we're getting there. Next, what you want to do is select this axis here. So left click on here, make sure it's selected. Can you see it selected? And then select this. It will open up the format axis by default in this kind of axis option section. Click on categories in reverse order. And that will put the dates to the top, which is what you're going to want to, to do, essentially. At which point you want to select the date axis. So left click on that. And then there's a couple of things you want to do here. First, click on number. Again, it's in the axis options. We're going to change this to date, date slash month, month. You could just have month if you wanted to, or you could just have date days if you wanted to, or even years. It depends, obviously. Well, chances are in an agile release plan, it's only going to be, the, the, it's going to be short. So date DD slash MM is, will suffice. Click add and you'll notice, oh, I'll take that one out. You'll notice it's just taken that year off. So it's just it's just visually better. Now what you're going to want to do is change this. So these are actually dates. So as an example, my first, well, my start date is on the 1st of the 1st, 2024. So I'm going to choose a few days before it. So let's just say the 28th of the 12th, 2023. Bear in mind I'm in the UK. This is the 28th of December, 2023. That might look a bit funny to you if you're watching from the States. You'll notice it's shifted everything here. Do you see that? The first date now is the 28th of December. For the maximum, I'd recommend a few days out from the finish. So our finish date is the 28th of the 1st. Let's just go 30 or the 30th of January, 30.01.2024. And again, it's just realigned it. So we haven't got all this excess space on the release plan at the bottom here. Now what we're going to want to do is select, select, we want to select both of these ideally. No. No, if we look at this, the orange indicates our tasks essentially. So what we want to do is click the blues, you'll see that. And then here we want to select in the format data series, you want to select fill and line, fill. It's blue at the moment. We want to do, we want to do no fill, select that drop. And there we have basically the predominant, the, the, the Gantt chart in action, really. The first task is set to start on the first of the first, and you can just see this accordingly. Now you can make changes to this. Um, you can look, we can start changing, you know, how many dates are displayed. So we could change this to say three, you know, and that might make it visually better because we've got more dates in here. For this particular date range, it actually makes sense. I'm actually gonna put it down to two. There we go. It just looks, it just makes more sense. It obviously depends on the duration of your sprints tasks, etc. So that's that. We've pretty much got it. The only other thing I'd recommend doing is changing the color of these tasks to show some, some kind of other variable. So what I would recommend that you do 
is maybe do a color key for the status. So at the bottom here, just make sure you specify it so anyone looking at this understands what the colors mean. So it could be something like, we've got, so we've got released, ongoing, and planned. So release could be a green. We could have ongoing, um, you know, as maybe a yellow, and planned could be an orange. You know, something like that. Just what have I used? Or actually, this would be better as say, and I'm actually going to use these. I'm actually going to use this here. Let's say blue. Let's say ongoing. And let's say planned. So we've got, and that's going to be like a, a nice orange. So what I would then do is refer back to the data in the table. We've got basically the first sprint is has been released. So I'm going to select this. See if I can select more than one at, at once. No, I'm just gonna do it. So double click until you select just one. In the fill, change this to your key. So that's been released. Just make sure you use the right colors with the key. This one's gonna be released as well. This is released as well. So we've got the first four essentially. You see what I'm doing here. It, it's kind of, you know, you just work through it. So now we're on. The next lot, which are ongoing, just the way I've set this up, you need to refer back to uh, your, I think it's this one. No, it's not, it's the, it's the lighter one. Trust me to choose a color that's not as easy to, so it's the second one down. To choose one that I couldn't remember that I chose. Right, so let's go on fill, and it's the second one down, isn't it there? And the same again. And the same again here. The last one is going to be this light orange, which is kind of already in place. In fact, I'm going to change this to this orange just to save me having to do it all again. But that's how to create a release plan, an agile release plan. You now have a temp template that you can leverage, and also you'll know how to set up a Gantt chart as well for it. So I hope this video has been useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. If you do want to pick up this template, it is accessible via the link down below. Other than that, best of luck, and I hope you have an excellent day.